So there's a funny trend going on in the United States nowadays. Republicans have put up billboards in multiple states saying that Martin Luther King Jr. was a Republican. Not only that, but he would also agree with modern day Republicans. Now understand, it's somewhat up in the air, I guess you could say, because uh, before the early 1960s, the parties were different. They were completely different. In fact, the parties essentially switched with the signing of the Civil Rights Act. Lyndon B. Johnson notoriously said, or infamously said, uh, we're gonna lose the South for a generation now. Because he knew that the white racists in the South weren't gonna vote for Democrats anymore when uh, beforehand they would have voted for some Dixiecrats because Dixiecrats were the racist uh, Southern Democrats. But by and large, the parties flipped uh, in the early 1960s, which is why, for example, you know, when Republicans say, well, yeah, we have Lincoln, so ha. Yeah, but that was back when the Republican Party was the equivalent of today's Democratic Party. They were the liberal party. The Democrats were the conservative party back then. But I know this is facts and history, and this all goes right over the head of uh, conservatives. But let's take a look at some of the things that Martin Luther King Jr. said to get a, an understanding of where he would actually fall politically. In chapter 23 of his autobiography, King writes this about the 1964 Republican National Convention. Quote, The Republican Party geared its appeal and program to racism, reaction, and extremism. All people of goodwill viewed with alarm and concern the frenzied wedding at the Cow Palace of the KKK with the radical right. The best man at this ceremony was a senator whose voting record, philosophy, and program were anathemia to all the hard-won achievements of the past decade. Senator Goldwater had neither the concern nor the comprehension necessary to grapple with this problem of poverty in the fashion that the historical moment dictated. On the urgent issue of civil rights, Senator Goldwater represented a philosophy that was morally indefensible and socially suicidal. While not himself a racist, Mr. Goldwater articulated a philosophy which gave aid and comfort to the racist. His candidacy and philosophy would serve as an umbrella under which extremists of all stripes would stand. In the light of these facts and because of my love for America, I had no alternative but to urge every Negro and white person of goodwill to vote against Mr. Goldwater and to withdraw support from any Republican candidate that did not publicly disassociate himself from Senator Goldwater and his philosophy. Can you be any more clear than that? But if that's not enough, we got more. About President Johnson uh, being president in 1964. Quote, this is a great victory for the forces of progress and a defeat for the forces of retrogress. Here's what King had to say about Ronald Reagan, the hero of modern Republicans. Quote, when a Hollywood performer lacking distinction even as an actor can become a leading Warhol candidate for the presidency, only the irrationalities induced by a war psychosis can explain such a melancholy turn of events. Yet again, I, I don't know how more clear he could be, uh, but he's got more. Here's some uh, quotes about United States foreign policy. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. That's significantly to the left of anything you would hear any Democrat say today and anything you would hear most progressives or liberals say today. But I've saved the big whomper for the last one. Quote, the greatest purveyor of violence on the earth today is my own government. Yeah, you know, the Republicans have a point. He sounds a lot like Mitt Romney here. I sense a hint of uh, Tom Tancredo or uh, Newt Gingrich in that statement. Oh, come on, man! Oh, come on. And by the way, that's totally true. At the time, uh, Vietnam was going on and, you know, I don't know if the Pentagon Papers had broken yet. I don't think they did. Much later, I think it was. But we learned that the United States was uh, 
bombing innocent villages, napalming women and children. That's what was in the Pentagon Papers. We learned horrible, disastrous war crimes that we did. Now, I'm not blaming the soldiers specifically because they're just following orders from their higher-ups, but that shows you that there was some sort of a disconnect and we were doing horrible things and we were the ones uh, committing the violence. And the argument was that, well, you guys don't get it. If we don't fight communism in Viet fucking Nam, then they're gonna show up in Tulsa, Oklahoma by Thursday. Don't you get it? Hello, silly liberals. Well, clearly we were right about that and they were wrong and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr was way ahead of his time. That's an accurate statement. There's even a case to be made that that's an accurate statement for today. We are the country that has 900 military bases around the world. We are the country that has uh, uh, greatly followed the Bush Doctrine, which is preemptive war. Uh, we invaded Iraq, a country that didn't attack us. Hundreds of thousands of civilians died as a result. We invaded Afghanistan. We're always involved. Post-World War II, the United States has invaded so many countries, you can't even memorize them all, you can't even keep track of them. So uh, here's what's going on. Martin Luther King Jr., certainly not a conservative, certainly not a Republican, definitely a progressive, and probably to the left of most progressives today.